Hi, today I'm going to talk about the. I said, again, what is wrong with. Yes, even more anomalies at the SCP Foundation today. So let's start with SCP 3008, which is one of the more well known location SCPs. It's uh, basically an ordinary IKEA, except when you step into it. Because what it, the door actually leads into the front door is a uh, pocket dimension of a nearly infinite size that resembles an actual IKEA. When I step into it, the, uh, the dimensions uh, are literally immeasurable. Uh, they did try measuring it multiple times, the SCP Foundation did try this, and they uh, didn't get any meaningful result out of it. When they tried to fly some drones into it, they lost signal. Uh, so when you step into it, inside it is a rudimentary day and night cycle determined by the uh, main lighting on or off. When it's on, it's a day. When it's off, it's a night. And in that night, there are, there are instances of SCP-3008-2. Uh, 3008-1, by the way, is the name of the pocket dimension. 3008-2 are uh, humanoid creatures, uh, which are either way too long, way too short for the size of their limbs. Uh, they possess no facial features and wear uh, clothing consistent with the IKEA uniform. Uh, I should put that in huge quotation marks because uh, they actually, everything is literally just a skin. There's no bones or organs inside and uh, it, at night they come and they attack the uh, people who sit inside. Uh, often they always uh, say something like, for sort of clothes, please exit the building. And then they uh, can immediately become uh, passive when the day begins again. That is of course unless you attack them. and. Uh, when they're killed, they, their body attracts more instances. So for people trapped inside, they have no way out other than some randomly located exits. Uh, there, there's no way to... Uh, you have to hide the body of the instance, or else they would uh, attract more instances of 3008-2. It's also very annoying that the uh, meatball areas of the shop actually restock automatically uh, so there's no way you can run out of food and in addition uh, the people inside actually the survivors have actually managed to create rudimentary societies to defend themselves so up on a totally randomly created lit of SCP to talk I could know about it's 1788. 1788 uh, is a process or a means of biological transformation in which a prepubescent human being uh, becomes an instance of 1788-1. Uh, but when they reach adulthood, the instance is to display predatory behaviour towards prepubescent humans. They settle in a large urban centre and find a form of employment, like everyone else. Uh, but they will not seek employment working directly with children, probably to avoid suspicion. Uh, then they begin tracking prepubescence in the area. Once every six months, an instant will attempt to abduct one of the prepubescent has been tracking and take them to an unauthorized location, which is uh, subjected to a process and turned into an instant of SCP-1788-1. Uh, they do not actually interact with each other uh, outside of mating. In fact, when two instances are placed in the same environment, they typically fight for dominance. Uh, mating season apparently occurs annually, but it's not seasonally linked. 
and they mate with one another, they have no sexual attraction to normal humans. After 40 weeks, a, uh, the offspring will be born, which is genetically indistinguishable from normal humans, and are not anomalous. However, they are prime candidates for undergoing the SCP-17AA process. So the SCP Foundation finds their capture or termination to be high priority, second only to the termination of the instances themselves. Uh, it is extremely difficult to distinguish an instance uh, of SCP 1788 1 from a normal adult human. Uh, they be to be obese, between 150 to 200 kilograms when fully grown. Their actual weight is close to 150 kilograms. Uh, because they have higher mass, mass on bone density, larger on average eyes, so they not enough to appear normal and casual for inspection. Their sweat contains higher levels of potassium and copper, so they still have a normal range of an adult human. The internal anatomy has been changed with their bones and cranium being enforced by heavy metal and their metal fibres being interwoven with structures resembling carbon nanotubes. Um, and they also possess backup organs and systems uh, which are uh, in case of failure could take over. Notably they have a second heart in the lower torso which in addition to that also helps it pump blood more efficiently during a normal operation. They also have a secondary brain in the upper torso, protected by its own skeletal structure, similar in construction to the ribcage. The exact function of this brain is unknown, though it is known that this brain can continue to function in the event of dysfunction of the primary brain. In addition, the last difference is a second pair of arms, located directly below the main pair, which apparently have equal strength and dexterity to the upper pair. And the instances of SCP 178 1s uh, are apparently capable of using all four arms simultaneously. Uh, these are usually hold closely to their sides, where they're largely concealed by natural bulk. So, in that way, a close instance of SCP 178 1 can also most not be uh, distinguished from a normal obese human, except on close inspection. Because of the relatively low popularity of the other two videos to make purely on the SCP Foundation, I'm going to stop this video right here. However, I do really convince you to check out the SCP Foundation wiki. And I'll see you next time. Bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.